Now, over the years, I've done a lot of smartphone reviews, but as much as I love that category, I also just love being outdoors, and more specifically, outdoors on a bike. For those who don't know, I actually used to commute to and from work every day, about 28 miles on a road bike, but that bike got sold a couple years back, right before the pandemic, and I really haven't gotten back into it much since. So, when Van Powers reached out and asked to collaborate with us on a sponsored video to show off their latest e-bike offering, I definitely took them up on the offer. This here is the Van Powers Urban Glide e-bike Pro, which is a class two e-bike. And since this is the very first bike that we're featuring on our channel, I thought we'd do a quick rundown of the different classes to show exactly how this device fits in into the regular classes. Kicking things off with class one e-bikes, there's really two things that you need to know about these bikes. The first one being is that they're limited to 20 miles an hour with that electric motor. If you can pedal faster, you can definitely go faster, but the electric motor can only go up to 20 miles an hour. The second thing you need to know is that class one e-bikes are only able to go with pedal assistance, which means if you're not pedaling the bike, it, the electric motor isn't gonna kick in at all. The nice thing about this class though is that there's really no limitations as to where you can take it. Anywhere you can take in a regular bike, you can take these bikes as well. When it comes to class two e-bikes, which is this bike right here, you have the same features as class one, 20 miles an hour for that electric motor, but then also the pedal assistance is included, but you also get the addition of having a throttle control, which this bike has right here being able to ride the bike with not having to pedal is a great advantage for a bike like this, just because it's a lot more convenient, especially if you don't wanna work up a sweat. Now, what's truly confusing is the class three e-bikes, simply because there's a lot of different regulations depending on the state that you're using them in. They have pretty much the same capabilities, except for the fact that they go up to 28 miles an hour, but then depending on the state that you're in, it may or may not have a throttle to control it. There are some bikes that do have a throttle that controls up to 20 miles an hour, but doesn't go any faster than that with the throttle. You do have to pedal in order to get to a maximum speed of 28 miles an hour. Now, if that sounds confusing at all, you're definitely not alone. I had to do a lot of research just to find that little bit of information, but I always recommend make sure you're checking local regulations, make sure you're buying the right e-bike for you, and to make sure you're not breaking any rules depending on where you're riding it. Before we go on a ride, let's talk about the specifications and also the design of the Urban Glide. One of the things that honestly I love the most is the V-shaped step-through frame here versus the traditional frame that has a bar up top or even the ones with a lower one that goes halfway down the middle. For me, as someone who's five foot 10, this makes it extremely easy to get on and off the bike, especially when riding through a city and having to stop at a lot of different intersections. But it also makes it a lot easier for people who are shorter, specifically my wife, who is five foot two. This makes it so much easier and convenient for her to get on and off the bike. The frame itself is definitely boxier and thicker than what most people are used to, but that's because it does house the internal battery that can easily be removed simply by placing the key in the lock here and giving it a turn. This ensures that no one's gonna be walking off with your battery anytime that you park it, but it also allows easy access anytime that you need to store the battery, since Van Powers does recommend removing the battery from the bike anytime that you store it for long term or to make sure it doesn't get too cold in the winter time. As far as the color options go, you obviously have red, but there's also a gray and green option. And based off of the pictures that I've seen, I probably would have chosen the gray color, but the red has definitely grown on me. And it is also just a little bit safer being more noticeable when you're riding on the street. And I actually got quite a few comments on this color over the last couple of days as I've been riding the bike around town. No matter how experienced of a rider you are, safety should always be your number one priority, especially when you're riding with traffic. So it's nice to see that Van Powers is prioritizing that just a little bit with a couple different accessories that are on the bike. The first is a headlamp, which makes sure that you're as visible as possible to oncoming traffic. And it does a decent job at night as well, lighting up the road in front of you. But I do recommend picking up something a little bit brighter if you want the best illumination possible. And then the second is a reflector on the back of the bike that doubles as a light up tail light anytime that you press or put pressure on the brakes. This is incredibly convenient. It, there's not an additional switch to turn on, it just works all the time, which makes sure that you're as safe as possible and the people behind you know what you're actually doing. 
The bike also has hydraulic disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors, which is actually an upgrade over the Urban Glide Standard Edition that has cable disc brakes. Now, so far, I've had no issues with the brakes on this bike whatsoever, even when going 20 miles an hour with that electric motor and then having to come to a quick stop. It's been impeccable every time. And even though it's not required because this is a class two e-bike, every version of the Urban Glide does come with a 3.5 inch full color display that actually works incredibly well in direct sunlight. As someone who reviews smartphones on a regular basis, that's probably one of my number one complaints, having a display that can't be viewed when you're outdoors. The display does show off the odometer for the bike, the current trip mileage that you're on, your speed, the pedal assist that you're on, and a clock as well. And then if you do have a separate smartphone that you're taking with you, there is a USB-A port at the bottom of the display that can be used to charge your smartphone. And that brings us to the 48 volt removable lithium ion battery that we saw just a little bit earlier. It has a 690 watt hour capacity, which Vampower claims should give you a rough estimate of 65 miles on a full charge. Now, we're gonna be talking about range in a little bit, but we all know that the ranges that they always show on paper never really live up to what you can get in the real world. And then finally, we have that 500 watt in-hub motor that's built into the rear wheel of the bike that's throttled to 20 miles an hour. But I do have to say, there's a lot more power in that motor than what the bike is actually allowing you to use, simply because even when you're going uphill at grades of upwards of five to 10 degrees, you're still going at 20 miles an hour, which means if they had the throttles turned off, you could probably go a lot faster than those 20 miles an hour on a flat surface. So now that we're done talking about the specs, at least for now, let's go on a ride to see how the Urban Glide Pro really performs in the real world. One thing that I do want to point out right off the bat is that the Urban Glide is a pretty hefty bike weighing in at 70 pounds. This is about double of what a regular bike weighs, which means it'll definitely be felt when riding the bike without the electric motor turned on or if you're planning on carrying the bike up a couple flights of stairs to store it in your apartment. That being said, the overall ride on this bike is extremely comfortable with the front suspension and also the padded seats. One of the rides that I went on was actually over an hour and I barely even felt it once I got off the bike. I'd say this is a great option for anyone looking for a solid commuter bike who wants to get to work without having to break a sweat. The included rear mounted rack does support up to 55 pounds of weight, which is perfect for a work bag or if you're going to be packing on the groceries. It's definitely a lot more solid than your typical third party option here with the bars being a little bit thicker. So just make sure that your saddlebag has the right clips to connect to it. Now to put all of this in the context, I've been riding the bike quite a bit over the last week to get a good feel for the overall handling, the acceleration with the electric throttle, and also the pedal assist, and to get a good sense of what the true mileage is going to be. I've ridden the bike for a solid 40 miles, with the vast majority of those miles being powered 100% by the throttle. Based off of my observations though, you can definitely consume less power when you pedal along with the electric motor. But I don't really know who would actually choose to pedal when the throttle is literally there at the tip of your finger. Vampowers does say that the bike should be able to get 65 miles of range on a full charge, but the only time you're really gonna get close to that number is if you're using pedal assist the entire time and riding on a flat surface without any stops whatsoever. In my personal testing, I needed to plug in the bike after just 38 miles since I had drained the battery to just 12%. But as mentioned before, that's because I was using the throttle the vast majority of the miles that I went with only using pedal assist when starting up from a complete stop. And I tried to max out the 20 mile an hour speed limit as much as I could. So I'd say 38 miles is probably the lowest number you should see on this bike. And if you do need to charge the battery when it is completely dead, the 690 watt hour battery should take about two and a half hours to go from zero to 100%. After putting on all of those miles over this past week, the only real thing that I would change about the bike would be to add an additional gear or two to the seven gear setup for the real wheel. While it's pretty easy to get up to that 20 mile an hour limit on the bike, it's harder to pedal any faster than that with the bike's limited gearing. So don't expect to go much faster than 22 or 23 miles an hour without pedaling like a madman. Well, that's going to do it. As the first e-bike that I've tested on this channel, I do have to say I am pretty impressed with the Vampowers Urban Glide Pro Edition. There are a couple different variants of this bike, as mentioned before, with the standard a uh, little bit cheaper, and then the Ultra, which is more expensive. But 
Honestly, this bike here does everything that I need it to do. And for the price, I think it is a very good value. If you want to know more about Van Powers and their complete lineup, make sure you check out the links in the video description below. And honestly, I'm excited to use this on a regular basis, but also get into other e-bikes as well. If you have any questions for me about the bike, be sure to drop them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.